Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are and wherever you're watching from. I'm so grateful that you're here today with us. If you're listening on the podcast, thank you for downloading and listening there on whatever platform you're on. We're glad to have you along with us. And if you're watching live, don't forget to chat. Add some comments, add some questions. We've got a great conversation we're gonna be having with Cassie Labore today. She is back. A couple weeks ago, you might remember that she came on the show. We talked about her making her first video and walked through kind of all the preparation steps. Since then, she has gone and recorded and made video. And today we're gonna to take all those parts and pieces and put them together and see what we can come up with to help her learn the process of editing. Now, I can almost guarantee you, we are not gonna finish up the whole video editing process, but we're gonna hopefully get her in a good place and get her to give something that she can probably say she'll wanna throw it out and redo it because that's how all first videos really are. But before we get to Cassie, and I'll introduce her again in just a second, I wanna remind everybody, that there's gonna be a little gap in the shows. We're gonna take about six weeks to rethink, renew, refresh, review, kind of look at all the things that we're doing with the show because we wanna really make sure, one, it's been two years since we launched the show. We actually started going live March, 2020. And all that time, since March, 2020, we've missed very few weeks that we didn't actually have some content. So some weeks we were doubling up so we could continue being having content every single week. A uh, hundred and almost like 30 different shows. And that includes when we were doing the, the video workflow show with Justin and, and Andy. So it's been a lot of content in two years. We just need a, a break to kind of step back and think about things. And I promise we'll be back at, towards the end of August. But we just, you know, we're really grateful for the opportunity. Thank you. Hope everyone keeps listening. And if you know me, I'll probably drop something once in a while just to, to stay in touch because we love sharing our information and knowledge with you guys. So with that said... Speaking of sharing knowledge, let's introduce today's guest. Cassie Labore is a master virtual classroom trainer and the original virtual training hero on a mission to rid the world of boring uh, slide reading lectures. Oh, I'm reading right now. Oh, oh, the irony and passive live online participants. So don't be passive, engage with us. She's a principal at Cassie Labore Consulting, certifying L&D professionals become virtual trainers, designers, and producers around the globe each day. Catch her sharing tips on how to be a virtual training hero at our online hero hangout the last Friday of each month and on LinkedIn. You can always learn more by visiting her website, CassieConsulting.com. With that said, Cassie Labore, welcome back to the Visual Lounge. Hi, it's so happy to be here. I'm excited. Now, Cassie, uh, besides anyone from TechSmith, you are, are the you have been on the show more than anyone else that is not that does not work for TechSmith. So. Seriously, <laughs> I'm gonna. Do I get a badge or anything like that? We, we'll make you a, a. We'll make you. We'll get you a visual lounge bed, as seen on the visual lounge. Yes, I'll do that. That's cool. Thank you. That's well, 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 thank you for coming back. So we're gonna we're gonna get into some video editing. We're gonna have some screen sharing stuff today. We're gonna walk through this process, but let's let's start because we we did a lot of that prep in that show, and I I know walking away, I probably was like, man, there's a million things that we just can't cover in an hour. And we, we, we chat here once in a while about things, but let's just get a gauge. How are you feeling about this video at this point? And be honest. Well, I'm really excited that you are helping me with it because I'm pretty darn clueless. I think that's why you invited me. Um, the, the, the noob of the noob <laughs> here, but, but I'm feeling all right about it. I don't, as you know, we've had some conversations. I don't, I don't love what I've recorded because I can tend to have perfectionist, uh, you know, ways about me. Um, but that said, I'm glad I have all these things to work with and I'm really looking forward to learning how you bring all these pieces together uh, to tell a quick story via video. Yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, and I think that's a, I think that's a really good observation, right? Like a lot of us are have these perfectionist tendencies. We want things to look better. Um, and most people, in my experience, that first video, whatever it is, it's like, because you what do, you're surrounded by all the stuff that you see, right? Like, uh, just for kind of full transparency, you and I looked at some videos today of a creator, and you know, uh, but we have to remember every creator has their first video, and it unless they're paying somebody big money, it's probably not looking not looking like the videos they're making today, right? Uh, yeah, that's the whole perfectionist tendencies I was referring to. But yeah, and of course, I go for somebody who's like got a whole studio around them and maybe, you know, a decade of experience behind them. Of course, that's what I want. <laughs> so. Yeah. 
Well, yeah. absolutely. Okay, so before we dive into the actual editing, remind us of what your goal and purpose for this video was or is. I, I had this very grand idea that the very first video that I would ever make in my whole life would be something I could put on my website. But the goal of it was to introduce people to me when they came to my website um, and to give them uh, an actionable uh, tip, if you would, on, on how to do their virtual training better. Uh, with, with just a very quick video. So they meet me and they get a sense of my personality and then they get a great tip that they can use right away. Okay, perfect. Uh, and, and so then you've got your goal. Tell us what, what was your process to get to the point where we're going to be editing today? Did you, you know, you know, did you do the script? Did you go out and just look for assets and materials? Did you record yourself? What were the things that you, you were working on? Yeah, for sure. Well, you guys made it very easy for me. Let me tell you that. And the um, the script or the storyboard idea was very, very helpful. Um, I did talk to a few friends who I know make videos. I'm like, what do you do? And so what it ended up being is that I started with the script and like, what's the story I want to tell and in each bit. And so I, I love that file that you gave me. It's just a very simple table. But um, I, I actually wrote the story first and then what would happen in each story section. And, um, and then and then from there, it was like, all right, what does each piece potentially look like? Would that be a picture? Would that be words? Um, where am I talking? Where am I on screen? And I just kind of went through that and made a draft. And honestly, I didn't overthink it. I, I think I went through the whole thing and I found I really enjoyed writing the story a lot more than I thought I would because I did procrastinate for quite a while on that. But then once I did it, I actually really liked it and sent it over to you for your feedback. And I was expecting you to send me a new version. And you were like, it's great. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay. Um, let me go from there then. So that that was kind of the process of getting going. So I, I just for for our purposes, I I have the script here, um, and so now we don't have to read through it by any means. But I wanted to make sure it was shared, uh, so you can see. Yeah, it's a pretty it's pretty simple, right? Like you've got your action, and then you've got what you were going to say. And how was it? Uh, and this is the place where we lost connection. We'll be back in just a second. I know. That's, that's, okay. that's the way the cookie crumbles. So anyways, we were talking about, uh, you know, the process from your scripting, uh, how you felt about reading a script. So what were your thoughts there about going and actually reading it? Um, I don't mind reading a script, but for me, trying to do the recording of me reading the script, I really did not like at all. Um, I don't like looking at myself while I'm talking. And what I was doing was noticing things like, oh, why did I turn my face that way? And maybe I, what's that glare? You know, and I wasn't able to focus on just being natural. Um, and, and that's one of the really, really big things I learned. So it wasn't really so much the script um, as much as it was watching myself do the script, <laughs> if you right. will. I appreciated the script. And one thing that I found I absolutely loved regarding the script is that, you know, I am, my whole world is go live and perform live. And, you know, the, the art of improvisation is probably one of my best tips, you know, for, for people in my world. Um, but with recording, I can edit and I can also just redo that sentence 17 times. And just do one sentence at a time. I mean, it's harder in the editing if I keep doing that. But it, I cannot do that live. And so I am so used to, it's monologue time, go. And recover. And, you know, right. don't pay, you know, and don't never let them see you sweat and just keep going. But I didn't have to do that. I'm like, wait, I didn't like that. I can just stop and do it again. And I, and I, and when I've recorded little uh, videos for people, like when I'm presenting at conference and they're like, can you make us a video real quick? It's never real quick. It's 13 takes of the three minute monologue or the two minute monologue. Right. And of course, there's always problems in it. But I, I and I, every single time I've ever recorded that, I'm like, I knew what I was going to say, but now I forgot and I'm just in it and I'm going to keep going. But having the script, I could just do one sentence and do it my best and then just yeah. stop and look away. And it's in the videos, as you as you know, where I just stop and look away. And I'm like, OK, what's on the script? And then I'm like, OK, OK, OK. And then I'm like, all right, ready. Say the next sentence, <laughs> you know. So it, it is is free. that blessing and the curse because, like, it's like I. That's one of the things I like about this. We can make a mistake, and I, I just move on, right? And I'm like, I don't have to worry about it. 
But on the other hand, if I am, uh, you know, like I really need to be perfect, I can fix it. So it's like, but it takes, like you said, it takes time. So it's, it is really a challenge, right? You got to fight. And I imagine people that make videos full time all the time, you got to get to a point. I think you even asked me, does that really matter? <laughs> you know, at some point, can we just go with what you've just done? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So let's, um, I think from here, what I'd like to do is we got a little bit of the background. Unfortunately, we have the technical issues. We're getting, working that out right now. Um, hopefully, hopefully we'll get the, everything taken care of, but, uh, if not, we're going to edit this and put it together. So, but let's, I want to talk really about kind of as your next thing is let's start building this thing. And, and, and I, I guess before I, I jump into Camtasia, what are the your big concern going into this? What are your big concerns about editing? Like obviously, there's things when you're recording live or recording that are challenging. There's things about writing a script that are challenging. But what what maybe fear do you have? What concerns do you have about actually getting into the editing? Yeah, thanks. I'm glad you're asking that because really that is I, I am very much of a creative person and you know I'm that kind of person that a lot of times if I have a story to tell, I am going to open up. PowerPoint slides and put images on those slides to help me flesh out my story. I'm not a person who opens up a document and writes words. And so what I'm curious about learning in Camtasia is how do you bring the pieces together? So there's the, how do you edit the little pieces? Um, obviously editing, editing the video um, and, and, and depositing them where they go. Um, and then how do you uh, do the segues and the transitions and the little, just the little things that, that make all those little magical videos happen that I see other people creating all the time. Or at least, I don't know, I don't see them creating, uh, showing me their end product. Yeah, you probably just see the, the end thing, right? And so, okay, so let's do this. I'm going to bring up Some Camtasia. I'm curious about logistics and it's, it's using the software, really. You yeah. Know, like, honestly, I open Camtasia and I'm like, literally, Matt, what's the first button that I should click on? I do see get started here. <laughs> you know, but I'm like, mm, yes, yeah, it so, so you know. it's a great question. So let me and in fact, I, I think I have it closed right now, but there's the home button. Right. And so probably a new project for because you've recorded everything uh, and it looks like you I think you recorded using uh, Zoom which is, which is fine. You can also record in Camtasia, but use Zoom. So that works. And so what we have here now is new project. I've just brought this up and it is, it is a blank slate. And now I, as, as you and I have talked, I have done some things uh, to, to move us along here. So we're not stuck on just cutting up, but the first thing you're going to do, Cassie, is we want to get this into Camtasia, right? So uh, a couple things here. One, we can just import media and importing media just means we're gonna get it in there, uh, and so I'm gonna to go to your file. Is uh, everything considered media? Like, I mean, earlier I was referring to all the different pieces as assets, just because that's just a word that sounded familiar to me. But is everything considered media, no matter what kind of file it may be? Yes. So you got movies, images, audio, uh, photos, JPEGs, PNGs. You know, just kind of everything, and you'll see that here in just a second as that it's going to take a second. My, I'm going to, my computer <laughs> between it's the like, live stream no. Camtasia, uh, I'm going to, maybe I'm actually going to get rid of a couple of programs, dump, dump, dump the programs that are maybe eating up my, my bandwidth and computer processing power. Um, so yeah, so everything is media though. So like I just brought it in here. And one of the things I want to point out that someone for like you, Cassie, that's super helpful, especially if you're going to be making more than one video, uh, which is likely, right? Like you're you're probably mm -hmm. gonna do something else. I actually went ahead and and took and to the library, and in the library you can create a new library, and I created a couple folders. So these are the assets that you sent me. So like, uh, like you had some heroes here. If I and I don't know if I'll be able to share these. Yeah. Um, but is this so? Is this library on your? application of Camtasia or is this like on some sort of TechSmith account where I have access to it too under it, my account? It's just on my, my computer, but what I can do is I can actually, uh, I can, share it. I can share it with you and that will we'll share okay. that through a shared folder. So then, so the, the nice thing about doing something like a library before you get started is that way you've got it all set up, right? 
and it's all there when you need it. And it's, it's separate from media because it's, it's available for any project. And so that's the benefit of doing that first. So you make a library and like, do you guys have recommendations on what kind of library um, headliners you would suggest? Like, how did you decide what my library should be? Is it images, hero images is a library or what does that say? I, I broke it up in the way that, that you had it broken up, like your newer heroes, your logos, your badges, your 2020 okay. heroes. And okay. I did that um, because I, I know there's, there's, there's no one right way to do it. It's like, how, what's going to make sense for you to, in terms of the organization? Um, and so I'm just going to try to see if I can zoom that in a little bit further. There we go. Ah, it's covering us up though. Uh, so, it's okay. Was, Cause it's, I mean, it's all right. They can, it's good to yeah. see it, zoom in on it. Yeah. So anyway, so you can, you can really put anything you want in any kind of order. There's not a, a proper order to, to do that. Like, you know, I would recommend maybe splitting out the things that like music, uh, probably my images. Um, but I'll be honest, I use, I put most of the things I download into a downloads folder. So it's just like a catch all, right? So however you want to keep, how, however it's going to keep you organized um, and moving quickly. That's why I think images and like your icons in one, your logos in one, your music in another. So, yeah, but okay. That's just kind it. of a pre thing that I think is helpful if you're going to make lots of videos. There's some other things we can talk about as we go, but let's start. So here's how I would do this, Cassie. If I were you and I was making this video and I've got a couple of different assets that you've made, we've got a couple of different videos we can work with kind of as that's more what we'll call B-roll. It's going to cover some stuff up. It's going to be not the main, it's not containing the main message. We've got some images here that we might want to involve. And then we've got your, your take. And I'm just going to take this and drag it down to the timeline. And it, what track you put it on doesn't really matter. I tend to put things on a lower track because then everything else is going to go on top of it. And, and, and there's lots of, I'm just going to put on track two for convenience right now. Um, and now, and I think it's showing actually the, which screen is it? I don't think it's, yeah, it's showing the right. No, I think it's showing yeah, a different screen. You just drag it down. And then you just took my face up. My face came up in the middle. Minimized. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So we can see that you, you've done a really good job. I'm just going to call this out that like, I know I can see the very clear lines, uh, on the timeline here. I'm going to make this bigger. So it's one of the things I always recommend is if it will, my computer is really lagging. I'm going to hmm. keep shutting stuff down. Uh, oh, come on. There we go. So I'm going to make this bigger so it's easier to see. So you can see these gaps, right? And I can tell those are where you pause, which is good. That's a, that's a good practice to get into. Um, I see. So it, yeah, that's the audio. Uh, what do they call those? Waveform. That's a waveform. Ah, thank you. Okay. Yeah. And so if we play this back, you can hear, we'll just do this first one. Engaging virtual learners can sometimes feel like gathering the cats for a family photo. Yeah, so, then you know it goes down right there and made it easy. I tried to do that. At least I knew that. That's great. <laughs> Using tools like Zoom and WebEx and Teams, although commonplace in today's... So what, what we'd want to do is, is I'm looking at this and if, as a first time video editor, what I would look really want to look at is, okay, like what's all the stuff I don't need? Mm -hmm. And, and there's a couple things. So one, you could leave like in here, you've got, this is two different lines that you said, and there's a gap. We could decide right now, do we want to keep that gap or do we want to leave that? That might be a secondary kind of step that I do right now. I just want to go through and find the good stuff. Like what are the, cause you said some lines multiple times, sometimes not. Um, the other thing I want to check real quick is project settings. So one of the th problems that, uh, I noticed was zoom. And I, I just realized this today is zoom records really small camera footage. Mm -hmm. So your, mm -hmm. your video is 640 by 360, kind of and an I have average beautiful size. camera. Like I have a really, I have a whole HD, beautiful camera that's brand new. It's like, I probably should have recorded this in Camtasia, huh? Cause I don't need to be in zoom for any reason. Right. And, and I mean, it's just convenient, right? But so, but just to point out, this is the size of your video. This is the size of a normal, like YouTube video, like a smaller now YouTube video. So. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is I'm going to resize this. It's not ideal to resize your videos to like 200%. I know it's a little blurry and not look as clear and crisp, right? Yep. But we're going to work with it. 
So, I mean, it's something you could decide like, oh, I'm just going to re-record this. And I know, you know, you might decide that for a couple of different reasons, but that gives us that way we're working at that size that we want to be at. So what I want to do though, is let me find one of these repeats here. So we're just going to listen back for a second. Presenters endlessly reading slides, attendees too bored to even have a question. Well, what can be done about this? Okay, so, so all sounds pretty good so far. Is there anything that can be done about this? Okay, so this is kind of like a first junction point, right? Like, well, what can be done about this? So we got what can be done about this and... Is there anything that can be done about this? I, yeah, this now, is where I decided, like, do I like the way I said that? <laughs> you know? Yeah, so... <laughs> yeah. And what we have to... And, and here's the thing, this is gets totally subjective. And this is why our video editing of yourself gets is a little harder. Like, which one do you like? I, I think this one. Well, what can be done about this? Not the, maybe your, your best delivery, but I like it a little bit more. Is then. there anything that can be done about this? So, yeah. but that's my preference. So which yeah. one should we keep? First one or yeah, second one? one you like the second one you said? No, the first one. I'm with okay. you. So what we're going to do, so when it comes to cutting, and this is, a, this, is, this is the part where it's like you're just going to get in the habit of doing this. There's a couple ways you can cut on your timeline. And it really depends on your video editor, but in Camtasia for Mac, um, it's command. I just make sure this is yellow. See the yellow top and bottom of that and this kind of the, the, the yeah. on the timeline. That means it's selected. Okay. And then we can use, there's the split. In my case, it's command T. On Windows, it's probably something similar. Um, and then we're Control just going to put, yeah. And then we're just going to put that you can either now, uh, do that again, or so you could do two of those and delete it, or I can select an area, see the, the red and the green flags. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's going to highlight a section and we can do a couple things. We can just hit delete and get rid of it. And that's going to leave a gap, which isn't bad. It just means we're going to have to move everything. Or if you right click on things, and my right click's been weird, there's a ripple delete. And what ripple delete does is going to shift everything over and get rid of it. So it got rid of that section. And it does this little thing in Camtasia called stitching that we may or may not want. But basically mm. stitching means it's stuck together. So if you were to move this clip, everything would move together. And so it, it just does it automatically in this case, we'll leave it, um, but in, we might come if we right click on it, we can actually unstitch it for later. And this uh, is just changing this version in the in the in this project. Like the original video video still exists in the library if I wanted it back. I'm so glad that you asked. That's a great that's a great question because yes, it's non-destructive meaning your original video if you're like, "Oh, I screwed this up so bad. I'm just going to throw away all this work and start over." You can you yeah. can bring it on. Or if you want another version like you want to take this clip and bring it in for another reason, you can you can change it for another example. Let me unstitch this to just show you here. Unstitch and now I'm going to move this out of the way. And let's say we want that section back. Nice. It's like cropping a picture. Exactly. And it's going to you could crop it. You can actually keep going. You could bring back the whole like the whole timeline uh, even more yeah. than you cut. A little click and drag thing too, huh? That's nice. Yeah. So We'll do. We'll, we'll find one more spot, and then we're, we'll kind of move forward because I think you'll get the, you got I the have idea. An idea. Use my virtual trainer's mantra. It goes a little something like this: What did I just say or do that you could have said or done? Good. Using something like this asks you to honestly say to yourself, "When are you taking too much control, and when can you let people?" participants be more involved in their own learning process. So it's funny. I, I think I, I, this is the one you sent me three, three versions. This is the one I have not looked at. So I, it feels different. I'm um, talking, 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 trying to get through it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to skip ahead. This looks like these are going to be two similar things. Listen, mm -hmm. respond, connect, debrief. So. Listen, respond, debrief, connect. 
Okay, I so connected the last one. So I did that first one of those four words. I did it backwards. So that's like a total delete right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so one of the things to think about as you're deleting, and 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 this will get will get you know you want to leave a little bit of space around, and we've got we can really zoom in here, so we can really get in close to see. Mm -hmm. So we can zoom in on a timeline, so you can make very much you, you can make more precise edits, right? And where that's gonna matter, I'm just gonna delete it to show you. There's the there's I just hit the delete key, and I could slide this over. Um, the thing about, about your, per, the precision is mm -hmm. that like what we will look for eventually is what are you doing with your eyes and your head? Mm -hmm. Are you, are you looking away? Did you look down? Cause what we want to reduce is the the need to cover things up or transition that just, cause you're pretty good about being fixed in spot, right? Your camera, you're kind of fixed in one place. Sometimes you're looking down you're looking over at something, but, um, we, if we, we won't touch it up right now, but we'll leave that space so then we can tighten and kind of lengthen. And, and then of course for emotion and pause, things like that. So the, the first part of the editing process is just this process repeated throughout the entire video and just get something rough in place. You mm -hmm. don't need to, uh, you know, what you don't want to do is try to make all these really precise, super fine cuts and edits because you're just looking for what are the good pieces because then you're going to be able to to work with those more so than uh, if you try to get everything too precise, you might have to change it and then it gets hard. And because you're like, oh no, now I got I want to add a little bit more breathing room here where I paused a little bit longer. But but this is literally the process. You just watch through it maybe twice, yeah. and just and sometimes one on one of the as I was working with your footage, one of the things you can think about is let's say. We'll take this particular clip here that the order of the steps. Listen, respond, debrief, connect. And you told me, you just told me that those are in the right order. This is the one in the right order. But what if, what if those last two really did need to be switched around and you'd only done mm -hmm. one take of it? So what we can do is, again, we can just do that. We're going to just put lines down to cut. We can just move it, do, cut it out and move it. Yeah, so I just want to, and I think this is an important way because you talked about, you're wondering how do you put everything together? And this is one of the ways video editors put things together. I'm just going to move this up to a new, create a new track. Bring that up there. Well, that's what you mean when you were saying levels, like this is a new track now? Yeah, so we got track two, track three. And now we can bring this down. And we'll put it in there. So now when we listen back. Listen respond, connect, debrief. Now, in this case, it doesn't I sound it's wrong. Because I know, I understand. I said it like we're done and that we made it the third one. <laughs> and, yeah. and I'm just going to undo like anything, any other word, like a, a word program, control Z, right? We'll undo those. So I can kind of, I can fix kind of everything I cut and, and did. So, but this is, it's a process. And I, I noticed, uh, I noticed in the, the chat, Garth had said that he gets tired of listening to himself when, uh, he's editing and that's, that's the truth, right? You know, this is not a long video, but you get tired of hearing your own voice, but you just power through it. And then, you know, when you're done, let me just bring up another Camtasia, that another version. Recording, by the way, Garth, like you could probably hear, I know that Matt, as you were listening to the videos, I'm like, sick of it sick of listening to myself record these things <laughs> yeah oh i oh i am i get i am the same way so here here in this timeline uh let's see if i can make it fit in this window a little bit better there we go um we've got here what i've done is i've actually taken two of your versions separately and i edited them in two different ways but what you end up with is something much like this this kind of line down here let me make this taller where i've just i've took these pieces and I've cut them together and it's, I've cut out all the extra stuff. I've taken out the bad takes and I, now it's all just fit together. Um, on, on this one over here, this first one, and let me zoom in here a little bit. So it's a little bit clearer. I actually, Cassie, one thing that might work well for someone like you, just as you're starting editing is I took this audio and I brought it into a program called TechSmith Audiate and Audiate transcribed all your words and then I edited it like a Word document. So I just listened to it and said like, oh, yep, that's the piece, cut that out. And, and, and just to give you a sense of what that looks like, we'll go to a, where a couple cuts. And so I didn't fine tune any of this editing. This is, but this is what Learners it looks like. to be engaged. Just use my virtual trainer's mantra. 
It goes like this. What did I just say or do that I could have let my participants say or do? Rather than reading a list of- My, my computer's a little lagging, so it's a little hard to see the, the cuts there, but, but for the most part, it worked really well. Now, there's always fine tuning to do um, when you do that, and again, it just stitched. The nice thing is, is once I sent it to, to Audi, I edited the words at, like in the word format, I exported it back to Camtasia, it brought everything over, so my video, the video, your video was edited. And that was pretty quick. I did that probably in 10 minutes and got a, got a rough cut. So yeah. So in this case, so you can see, I, I, I've done some extra work here, um, but I think I've got it to a point, let me just, I'm gonna do the trick where I'm gonna hide a couple things so that we don't see. Is this, um, is audio what you're using to separate audio and video and, and like sort of just pull out audio and maybe replace it with another audio track? No, or no, no, no. We can do that all in Camtasia. Audio oh. really transcribes and has some, some things to make it sound a little bit better, some noise removal, oh. some get rid okay. of some of the echo. Audio. But the key thing is it does a transcription and then you can edit the, the audio based on the words that in the transcript uh, versus oh, okay. looking at a timeline. Wow. So let's, I'm just going to play a little bit of this back so you can get a sense of, again, this is just a, one of your takes and I cut it up. So trying to engage virtual learners is like trying to gather the cats for a family photo. Using tools like Zoom and WebEx and Teams, though commonplace in today's world, remain a challenge. In many virtual training sessions, it's presenters endlessly reading slides. Okay, so you can get the sense, like I've, I've put, put together all the best pieces. You can see some of them, like down here, this was actually a really good flow for you. Uh, some of them I just had to take like little one, one sections. For instance, rather than reading through. But you'll notice like uh, there, I mean, if I zoom in here, and I know it's a little hard to see on your, your screen, Cassie, uh, this is, we're at a, like, we're, we're seeing every frame of this video. And you can see there's kind of a big gap in here. Yeah. But this is me. I, like, I found that part to be more of a struggle because I didn't totally script it out and I really wanted to be natural with it. And then every time I got distracted by being on the camera. So I kept <laughs> sitting there staring at the camera angry. <laughs> and that's what all that blank space is. And I'm like, pull it together, pull it together. What was I trying to say? <laughs> I would go back and try to re-record it. And actually I'm still not really happy with, for instance, I don't think I nailed that whole piece at all. Oh yeah. Well, and that's the great thing is like, we could, we could have you re-record that or, you know, you might, as you choose to do it. But what it's kind of pointing out is like the distant, the pause that's in between this is much bigger than this. So I, cause we want that for instance, to, this was a, this, that for instance was not part of this take originally the, of, of down here. Yeah. And a couple of times I'm like, I don't really think I want to say for instance, cause that's more of a writing thing than a language thing for me. Yeah. You know, like I, in real life, um, conversationally, I'd probably say, so it looks like this, for example, I probably wouldn't say, for instance, you know. <laughs> well, so, and, and that's a challenge yeah. with scripts, right? Is writing yeah. the way you talk versus the way you write. And those are different. Um, I remember I was in a class in grad school and it was a, uh, we had to write a script and uh, they, the professor, she knew a former student that was, did, did voiceover readings and work and, and he read our scripts and he, the feedback I got is like, you write like you talk. <laughs> it's like, well, that's good. Wait, uh, and he's it. like, well, it should be faster, blah, 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 whatever. Um, but, but yeah, so I, I think kind of keeping things in perspective here. So this is like a rough cut. So now once you have your rough cut and that, and again, we're not going to show the whole process because that take, that would take us some time to go through that. But once you have something that's satisfactory, you know, there's always going to be pieces you're not like, ah, for instance, do we, uh, you know, uh, but let's start thinking about the other things we can do to make this a better video. Because as is, the message is there, the words are there, but we've got problems that sometimes you like, you can see between the cuts that like your, your head moves and it looks jumpy, which isn't yeah. terrible. It's just, you know, we sometimes want to cover that up. So the next thing I think about is, are what are the things that need to be shown? So we've got your voiceover, we've got you on camera, you're looking good, you're, you're sounding good, uh, all, you know, as, as good as you're gonna be for your first video. Uh, and now we wanna think about what do we show to kind of emphasize our points. And you had said at the very beginning here. Trying to engage virtual learners is like trying to gather the cats 
for a family photo. Okay, and this is a great visual, right? G gathering cats for a family photo. And you had asked me about, well, can I, I've got, you, you shot some video of your cats and can I use that? Um, the answer is of course you can. And so let's, let's talk about how we're gonna do this because we've got here, I don't know which one's better. Is one or do you know if they're cats one or cats two is better? Or are I they kind of the same? I just did a bit longer, so I was trying to get like extra footage in case because I know I want the Benny Hill, spe you know, speed it up thing. Okay. So probably the first one is fine, and then I I think the first one's fine. Okay. Well, I I grabbed two, so if that's if that's a problem, we'll we'll make it work either way. It'll really be funnier matter. if it's longer. So it's we'll go funnier if it's longer, and I just recorded the two so we could get more of it. I think the first one, they're, the cats are ridiculous, so it's fun no matter okay. what. Okay, so <laughs> this video is like lo like longer than your actual recording, so that's not going to work for us, and it's got noise. So right, so we need to like speed it up, like you said, and cut out the noise, and only use the good parts. And if we could edit me out of it a little bit too, I would love that. We, we can do all that. So, okay. So what you're going to do is when you're working with footage like this is if, if it's got just kind of background, uh, two things you can do. We know we're going to speed it up. And actually, if you speed it up fast enough, it, it removes the audio because at some point the audio doesn't make sense when it's super fast. Yeah. But if you don't want the audio on any clip, Cassie, what you can do in Camtasia is up in this upper right hand side is your properties panel. And there's a little audio icon up here. And you can see there's a gain meter. You can turn the gain down to zero. So now oh, it's got no, no sound. Love it. So that's one thing. The next thing we're going to do is this clip because we know it's too long. We want to speed it up. We, we might trim it a little bit, but let's just try it this first. We're going to right click on it. And down at the bottom, I think it's at the bottom, is add clip speed. So now we've got this little blue kind of line bar going across the the length of the clip and what we can do is down at the very end there's we move our cursor and it changes and it's a little hard to see but it changes to look like a little stopwatch and i'm just going to drag this clip to be a lot smaller and let me just move it over a little That's bit to make it go faster by making it smaller mm -hmm. That's the speed up i do think the first video is better because there's a lot more in it okay well other. we can we can try we'll try both right like we can so now we've got this clip and let's just, we can just play it back. Our like irresistible catnip. Transform your passive online. Did I, was that? That's the ending that? audio. And this is the, yeah, you know. Yeah, let me, let me clean some things up here. Cause I, I know no, I don't no, want those. No. <laughs> so that's, this is the problem when you're working on your timeline. You gotta be careful that you're not putting things there that you don't want. And so let me get rid of these so that way I don't make that mistake again. And now, because I'm going to zoom back in. So, you know, with any video editing, you just have to be, this is the type of stuff to be mindful of is like, am I, am I using right the right there, stuff? Yeah, that's the ending video of, of Luna doing the treats. Here we go. So now I'm actually there you go. Yeah. speed this up a little bit more and just make it kind of, so now it's going to be like, 15 times its normal speed at least. So I, I had already done one of these earlier, so it's, I'm kind of cheating a little bit. So I'm just going to speed yeah. it up though. That's okay. So now when we play this back. Virtual oh, I got some extra stuff on there I want to hide just because I, I was playing with it before. I just want your voice. Age virtual learners is like trying to gather the cats for a family photo. Using tools like Zoom. And you're right. I think I actually like the first one better. So we can get, yeah. we'll get rid of this one. And it looks like Age this. Virtual learners is like trying to gather the cats for a family photo. <laughs> yeah, right Using there. tools like Zoom. So, so there's a, one other thing that I, you, you talked about cutting, cutting, cutting out yourself a little bit. What I did on that particular clip as well is I made it bigger than the, the, the canvas. So if you yeah, think so kind of, you just right there where my hands are rather than my whole body and it makes the, the room smaller too. I think that's better for this shot. Right. Yeah. And then you could always like, we can always kind of adjust however, but I think it worked kind of like this pretty well, uh, you know, leaving just a little bit of space. So, um, so yeah, that's how you add this clip. So now the trick here, as we go through this, this entire video process 
and this is so we've listened through it maybe once or twice to get kind of the base message. We're going to listen through it again, and we're going to put in what we call our kind of secondary footage. This cat is a great, like, great emphasis. I've also gone ahead and I've taken some, you shared some images with me that you liked, Mm -hmm. and I started putting these into place. So, for instance. In many virtual training sessions, it's presenters endlessly reading slides. Attendees are. So, again, we can start thinking about his alignment on screen. You know, I've got uh, plenty of kind of room to move him around. He's a, it's a vertical image, but it was big. So I can think about, you know, like I don't want to, I want all my screen to be covered up. So that seems like a good spot. And then I even had another image that I added that we'll get to here. Attendees are too bored to have. Now, here's one of the things that's going to happen. You notice that it goes from this image of this guy. Attendees are too bored. And you, it's almost like you flash. I don't love that. It's, yeah. So what we can do, we have, we have, here's our options. We can either shorten how long this guy is on screen, which isn't probably a bad thing. We could just lengthen this image so it just fills in the gap. So it kind of decide, do we feel like there's purpose to have you back on screen? And this is a question you got to ask yourself. Is what am I, whatever I'm showing making sense to my audience? Is this the thing I need to show? Mm-hmm. And in this case, I think I'm going to try, I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do something here and let me zoom in a little bit more so you can see this image is going to hang over the, the clip splits right here. And I'm going to make it, this image a little bit longer. And this is a trick. This is, I love this trick is because if I just make it equal, well, I guess that actually might work too. Fines. Attendees are too, bo- it feels a little, it could be a jumpy or if it's too short, it's going to, we're going to see the. Fines. Attendees are kind of the jump point. So I'm just going to make it, I like it, the idea of it being a little bit longer, hanging into this quiet for a second. We'll see. Play. Attendees are too bored to have any questions to ask. So what's the solution? And so mm-hmm. then I did it again over here is I had this image and it's just a still image hanging over again this clip. So that way I'm covering up those jump points, right? So we're not seeing the little twitches and jerks. Uh, and this is actually, a, this is what we'd call a J cut. That's a that's a kind of a technical term where it hangs over. So, and I like, uh, but I like the emphasis of coming back to you here. So what's the solution? It's like, what's this, you know, you know what's, what is the solution? Or, it's so funny if I wasn't so worried about what I was doing, I would be more of a real person because I'm just sort of sitting there. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So those are images. You can add videos that way. The next thing here is I want to talk about down here. You said something I thought was really important. I wanted to emphasize, and and I don't know if I love the implementation of what I did here, but I added some graphics because one of the things you can do is not only images and videos, we can add Camtasia will allow you, allow you to add text and all sorts of things. Uh, and here we go. So like this, what did I just say or do? that I could have let my participants say or do. Like this really impactful statement. It is the, it is the, it is the point of the video, right? The point of the video. Yeah. And I was imagining the same thing that those would be on the screen and for sure. And then you've got like, like I can have, that's where I have company colors and you know, even the logo opportunities, right? Yeah. We, and we could, we could play with that. So what I, I'm going to, I'm going to let you in on a trick. I did, I did very little work to make this. (laughs) So I I can get an idea. Yeah. So, so what I did though, is, uh, I, I literally went to, uh, the asset library and I think I, I'm trying to remember where I put this. I think I might've just put in downloads and I found several of these. This one is uh, box, right? Um, I'm just gonna see if this will pull up into our screen share. It's going to be really small. And that's what it looked. I don't know if you can see that. It's really small. It's just a box with some text. Mm-hmm. And and because I, I had your colors, you sent me your brand colors, I was mm-hmm. able to match that. And, you know, what this is, is this kind of this motion graphic that Camtasia has a whole, whole bunch of them. There's stuff that's free in Camtasia. There's stuff that's available on the library, uh, you know, the library.techsmith.com, the asset library. But what it is, is you can actually go in. Um, I did one modification here because I, was, I wasn't happy with the way, because it's just, it's re- really meant to be a transparency, right? Like on top of something. And I didn't think that it didn't look good on top of your face. Um, go figure, right. right? 
And so oh. one of these, I'm trying to remember where which one it was. I basically just added, uh, nope, not that one. I added a white box uh, or made the background white. But the cool thing is with these, let me close some of these things because I don't want to get too complicated here. When I click on this, uh, yeah, so I put the white box down below, which was super easy. But here in the properties, there's a couple things. There's a place where, so I don't have to type anything in here. It's all up here, text, there's the color. And I actually made a Cassie theme that has your colors. Now, in this case, I, I might've gotten in the wrong spot because it's choosing the, the blue or the turquoise kind of color. Um, but I can, you know, I can come in and modify this and try to make it match. If you have your font installed, I did not have the, your main kind of brand font, but you could change it to your main brand font. Um, mm -hmm. So there's things that you're going to be able to do in this property box that is, is really powerful. And, and the way I got, like, I just added this. So there's a white shape, basically a white rectangle that covers the entire screen. This motion graphic that I changed the color, put the text in. And then I did add a transition. And it's just one of the default transitions. Oh, no. it, it's not even, uh, it's a bar wipe is the transition. So not one I typically use, but I thought it just looked... What did I just say? Really great there. Kind of gave this nice kind of effect as it feels like it's pulling across this white box. And that's yes. it. So really not a lot of modifications to that. And then I just leave that white box up for a little bit. And then we, I probably can even shorten this here. And then it's just going to come back to, to you. So, so again, as you're going through, that's like there's, and, and these are all pretty basic graphics. Uh, because again, Rather this was actually on top of the video recording. Yep. And that's, so if you think about your video, think about it in layers, right? Your we call this a Z order. And so top to bottom, anything that's in a, these higher tracks is on the top layer. Anything on the lower tracks is the bottom layer. And so I can put anything like you're on, tr you're technically on track two. So there's one track below you that I have, I have some music that we, we can, question later uh, and talk about in a, in a few minutes. But then on top of that, there's this white box and then there's that motion graphic I downloaded and, and mm -hmm. added in. And, you know, once it's in your library, you just drag and drop it onto the timeline and then you can, you can modify it. So for instance, if I choose another, we'll, we'll just pick another one here. Uh, let's choose whatever this thing is. You know, it's, I can, if I play it back, you can see there's that box, a box with these kind of scrolling ideas. I know it's pretty hard for you to see there, but, and then I can change it. Main title, text one, text two, text three. If I apply the Cassie theme, it's going to give me a turquoise. You know, again, I'll play with the theme color so we get the, I think the more of the kind of coral pink, um, but that's it. So those are pretty easy and there's a ton of them available to just, you can use and change the colors and put some of them. You can even put your logo in. So you've got that really great K Cassie square. Um, yeah. That yeah. you could, you, you can add in. So uh, again, we're just looking for purpose. Now I did this as we're going through, let's, let's listen to this part. And now I added, so one of the things you didn't send me Cassie is screen recording. And this is a great thing if you're, cause you're working in a virtual environment. Like I work in software so you work with these awesome tools that Zoom and WebEx and GoTo, what all the tools that we're familiar with, right? And if you're doing tips about them, I highly recommend you record your screen and use it. One, so you don't have to be on camera all the time. But two, like you gave a really great suggestion here. And I thought, you know what? We need to see that. So let's watch this point and you can see what I did with it. Set up the purpose of the list of tips and then mute yourself and allow the participants to read the list themselves. Once they're done reading, they can indicate with a reaction of their choice and then use their annotation tools to type next to which ones they want to discuss further. Okay, now I don't know if I did this process right. <laughs> like, cause I don't yeah. know. It's good. So, okay, so let's walk through a couple of these things here. Uh, so literally what I did is I went into Zoom I opened a whiteboard and I recorded the whiteboard. I, I put this list in here. I don't know if it's, it makes the list. I just like, I need stuff. Just put it in there. Uh, yeah. I, I was like, where can I get, you know, I was trying to find a screenshot of that. I do have it. I just have to find it. 
<laughs> yeah, or or just go make yeah. one, right? Like, because the cool thing is you can record your mouse cursor, you can record kind of the the stuff here, and I'll show you something cool with that in a second. Um, mm -hmm. It wasn't perfectly timed, and so this right here, there's a when you're on a clip, if you go up to your your edit menu, and this is a little bit obscure playhead. There's add exported playhead frame at playhead. So basically, it takes a picture of wherever. This is this guy, this little triangle thing is your playhead. So you can create a basically a still, a still shot, a frame, like just a picture of that one thing. And I, this very first part, that's all it is. It's just another picture of, of my video. And then this graphic here, this mute button is in PowerPoint. I literally opened PowerPoint, inserted icons, found a mute button, made it big, changed its color, hit control C, copied, and pasted it right into Camtasia, which for me, I was I actually looked in a lot of other places first for a mute button. I couldn't find it, but I thought, well, that's a great emphasis. And, and then I just added the fade in, fade out on it. So it would, when yeah. it just pop in. Now, this one doesn't matter so much. I'll, again, I just added some still image. This was a, another yeah. asset from our library, a little animated GIF. I didn't know what you meant by adding the reactions. Um, so I thought, well, I think she means something like, emojis that's what i thought of yeah, yeah. and i did like um, the idea is you know you're gonna, physically when you're in person you can see that people are done but online people need to let you know they're done and so we use the reactions or the feedback and i say take a moment to read this click on the green check when you're done reading yeah. and then i mute myself so they can read and then they type their names i didn't do that the recording is not perfect they type their names next to the tips that they want to talk about. And then we take turns coming off mute discussing. Yeah. And I have visual indicators the whole way through of them saying, I'm done reading. And now I want to talk about these ones. And then they drive the discussion, not me. Yeah. And that's and so, an example of what did I let you say instead of me saying it. So capturing that process sometime would make this video even better, right? Like an actual yeah. process you're in because then they can see it. And you're going to make, you're going to take shortcuts here, right? You don't have to show them every little detail, but you want them to get the sense of what that looks like. I will say I did one other thing on when this little emoji pops in. They can I added a little sound effect. I just a little yeah, pop. So it yeah, I loved it. I love that. I noticed it right away and love that. Because you know my favorite YouTuber does those little sound effects. So he did that for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Then, then the last thing I did here is I did a zoom. So that's a great thing about screen content, right? It's it's pretty small, pretty small to read. And then and I then just use their annotation tools to type next. And so I put my name in there because I wanted to repeat the name of the thing, right? Like I want to talk about that. And so yeah. that that just draws attention. And you can zoom on any video. Like you can you can zoom on your camera video. You got to be careful. Too much zoom and it's going to get blurry. It's going to fuzzy. Um, but you can animate these zooms and you can actually animate the zooming out. Uh, so it's, it's just one of those things. Again, we want to show our users what we're talking, given like video is a visual medium. Let's show them what you're talking about, Cassie. Let's get them. We want to draw their attention. Like, where am I looking? What am I supposed to see in this case? We want them to see the cursor. Now, one of the things that we can do that's a new in Camtasia even is we should be able to go in here and if I'm, you know what? I didn't record. I actually recorded this video with Snagit, so I can't do what I wanted to do. If I record with Camtasia, I have lots of control over the mouse cursor. I can make it bigger. I can actually. Oh yeah, you're talking about that. Yeah, and that's so, a new feature, isn't it? It is. It is. And yeah. I was in a hurry, <laughs> so I recorded with Snagit. Yeah. But I know. It's like anyone who has deliverables. I gave them to you yesterday. So. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah so so again we're this part of that process is like, we're just going through where we've got a rough stuff where we might be trimming up as we go. Like, Oh gosh, that, that's like right here. We end that kind of sentence about the, this tip, the, you know, process. And then listen, respond, debrief, connect. And we could be like, well, is that too, is that the right pacing? Do we want it to be a little faster, slower is harder? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's where we'll continue to make those tweaks as we notice like, oh, that, that took too long to get to the point. Like, I know, I think it's here. And voila. Like, is voila, like, should that be more, like, should we be quicker on the, you know, like, that's one of the things yeah. we have to figure out. The whole thing needs to and be voila. a little quicker. Yeah. yeah. I need to so, remember what I was saying and not be thinking about recording what I was saying. But, but yes. here's the but here's the great thing in the editing. Let's, so let's just play it back one more time. Connect, and voila. Okay, so it's a, so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna drag this. 
to be a little bit closer. And it's all silence. There's no waveform there. I'm going to move it back over. And now. Connect. And voila. So we can, we can, we can, we can play with that. And that's the kind of the fine tuning we're doing as we're going, as we're adding the B-roll. Then we've got one more kind of B-roll here that you, you got the platforms conclusion. like WebEx, Teams, Zoom are like irresistible catnip. Transform. And so then, you know, so we'll have to think about the timing on that and the ending. And then of course, anything you want at the end, your logos, your call to action, uh, whatever it might be. So yeah. again, we're just kind of laying out process here, not, you know, yeah. d done some of the work here. So, but now we've got, we've got a pretty good looking video uh, on our timeline. You know, there's probably stuff we could add. There's probably things we could tighten up. But one of the, if once we did that, there's another consideration I like to do here is thinking about uh, our music. You know, what is yeah. our music selection? Do we want music? Is it, you know, music is uh, two, two edged sword. One, it's good because for, I one comment you had mentioned to me that is like, ah, oh, it's a little low energy. You know, you didn't, trying to read the script, look at yourself in the camera, do all those things. Energy maybe is not. So music can maybe help us with that. The other thing is if you're trying to teach somebody, is it going to get distracting? So we got to walk this fine line of what we're going to do. Um, in this case, because all these clips at the here at the bottom have your audio are uh, separate clips, I'm going to make my life easier. I'm going to select them all, right clip, and I'm going to group them together because what I want to do is there is an audio effect in Camtasia that's really awesome called Emphasize. And what that's going to do is when we add music, it's going to make the that audio sound, uh, the audio be the, what like focus on the words that you're saying, not the music, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now I have picked out one track. I don't know if I love this music. I have a couple other options we could try and I'm going to actually put this back. And this is from the Camtasia library, the track. So you're allowed to use it because you're, you're paying for your account at yes. TechSmith. Uh, and we do yeah. have some free stuff too. The free stuff just gets used a lot. So that's that's the downside. And there's lots of other royalty free, free to use places. Uh, you can go to YouTube and download music. But having some music is nice, especially for this type of video, I think. And so now this audio currently is at 100% of its volume. I've added the emphasize here. And if we look at emphasize, there's, I can I can adjust how much it emphasizes your voice. So let's just see how it sounds. Trying to engage virtual learners is like trying to gather the cats for a family photo. Using tools like Zoom and WebEx and Teams, though commonplace in today's world. I did forget that we I added that that lower third. Again, just default from Camtasia or from the, yeah. the library. Yeah. Remain a challenge. In many virtual training sessions, it's presenters endlessly reading slides. Attendees are too bored to have any questions to ask. So what's the solution? How can we get virtual learners to be engaged? Just use my virtual trainer's mantra. Be honest with yourself. It okay, so you get the idea of what it's like with music. My computer's lagging a little bit, so it's uh, a little hard to, to watch. Um, but if you don't like the music, there's a ton of other options we could try. And it, it's yeah. amazing what music can do. So let's actually try this real quick. I, I like it a whole lot better actually with the music. Yeah, isn't it crazy? This It changes yeah. the feel. So let's, uh, I've got lots of emojis in my library now. Uh, let's try, <laughs> this one is, let the music play. Let's just, I'm just gonna try a different one here. And we're gonna just add a track below. Oh, do you know what we're going to do? We're just going to put it up top. That's okay. It doesn't matter too much. I'm going to, so on the side here, there's ways to like hide. If you hide a track, it means it's not going to play back. Or if you're publishing it, it won't, you know, it won't get in the way of the publish. So let's just pull this one over here. Yeah. It's like hide slide, huh? It's yeah. there, but yeah, I got you. No, that's, that's I, I love the analogies to things like PowerPoint. So let's try this one. I've not heard this. I don't remember what this music is. Trying to engage virtual learners is like trying to gather the cats for a family photo. Using tools. A little too sappy. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't feel fine. right. I mean, the first one was fine, but yeah, I get it though. It's neat. So yeah, so that's, so this is really the, again, just trying to think through this process, right? Uh, we, we've gone through 
and we, you know, there's some cleanup we might want to do on the audio because it's too long. So we'd probably shorten it. Uh, you might add like a fade on the, on the audio just to, so it doesn't just stop because we've cut off. So we, and I'm not even going to listen to it. Just add the fade there. And, um, and now we've got pretty rough, good video, Cassie. And, and again, there's things I'm, I'm looking at, like if I was doing this video, I'm looking at this, this goes on a little long. Yeah, so he's there too like long. And there's other little things I want, like the virtual trainer's mantra. I'd like the hero to be there with her and I'd like it to say the mantra nice and big. Um, yeah. I want to re record a couple of things and clarify the process and the example in a better way. And I also need a stronger ending because um, I ended up getting away from the catnip and I wanted it to be the tasty treats because she's grabbing the treats at the end. So, it's just little things, but seeing it put together though helps you figure out where you can put in pieces and shorten and lengthen different things. Yeah, and even something like this where we can yeah, like, where yeah. it's not gonna be up the whole time. Uh, we don't want it to be there, like we want it to come in. And it, you know, so I'm just gonna say kind of here at the end, one of the things we can do really easily, just again, I wanna give you a taste of things you can do is like, let's get, let's get some movement on this. These are called behaviors. And it's just going to add some kind of animation effects. And I don't know if this is going to be the right one. It's one of these things. Editing is a lot like painting, right? Where yeah, you're going to try something. It's going to, yeah. you're like, oh, no, that didn't work. Let's try something else. You're going to just keep playing yeah. with it. But let's see how this works. It's presenters endlessly reading. doesn't look like it wants to, did I get, I don't think I got it. Maybe I didn't get it added on there. Okay, there we go. And it's presenters endlessly reading slides attendees are so it's just a little bit of movement a little bit of motion right uh even I even like, on so I like it better than adding another image i like staying on that guy and having that i'm bored pop up to say at the point when i say too bored to have any questions and then only one image and we don't even have that other one yeah and and then what we can do is say well we, let's let's make this work with cassie's colors right like yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we can we can really play with it. The other thing I, I would suggest is even on an image, like if this one's up too long, um, I've already scaled it a little bit. But like you can again zoom in. You've you've got some room on this. Maybe it's give it some motion. Maybe we're really I gotta zoom towards this guy's face. And animations yeah. are just animations. And I'm gonna do custom. And let's as it plays here. Zoom in on the guy on the right. He's the one on the computer. <laughs> yeah. He's too bored for any questions. And we've got, and this is, this is a huge picture. Yeah. So, so we can really, so when it comes in and we don't want it to be too fast, but when it comes in. Too bored to have. Oh, I, I inevitably did what I didn't want to do with that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's because everybody's watching. Well, my computer's like, what are you doing right now? Yeah. We're, okay. So there, and then. Trust me, everybody at home, I do know what I'm doing with Camtasia. Barely. <laughs> Just That's slightly. Okay. Oh, Camtasia and my computer are struggling. So, but yeah, so the idea would be that we'd, we'd want to get that in there and uh, make it make it timely, you know, so it starts small, gets bigger. Uh, but all things we can do. Now, one last thing before we'll wrap up the show here, because I know we're over mm -hmm. time. Uh, mm -hmm. So first of all, because of the way I'm just going to, clarity here. I'm going to get rid of all this dead space at the beginning that we didn't use. Um, only because uh, of the way that I edited this video uh, is that there. Normally you can, you can just make it so it's all at the very beginning. You know, you have to make sure everything's kind of still lined up. But then, so I've got this out here. It's only a with what right now it's a minute 36 seconds. So not very long. That's, that's really watchable. We have to export it, Cassie. And I'm not going to go through this whole process, but I want to see to see it. Basically, go to export. You can go local file, or if you want to send it right to YouTube. I usually do local file and then upload it. Uh, it's going to ask you, like any other thing, you know, what do you want to call it? Where do you want to save it? And if you're doing just uh, for your website, MP4 is great. Uh, if you want to have its own player with it, you can do it as like a web page. Um, and then you can do SCORM and stuff like that. A lot of our instructional design friends need to do for their yeah. LMSs. Yeah. But that's going to give yeah, you yeah. that final package that then you can share and, and put it out there. But it's a critical step. This is not shareable with anyone except for people that have Camtasia. So. Yeah. 
Where does right. it, um, in, in the organization, you mean, or like in, not in the whole world, only in the organization? The, um, maybe I'm not understanding what you're asking. It's not shareable. When you said it, like when, when you're exporting it, it's only going, and nobody's going to be able to open it unless they can, it's only going to be able to be opened in Camtasia at this point. At this point, yes, until we export to that M .mp4 file, because right now it's right. a Camtasia file. If I if I send this, which I can send this to you, you will be able to import it into your version of Camtasia and then pick yes. up from where we left off. Uh, if I send you the MP4, it's just a flat. All those layers are flattened, and there's yeah. like you could edit it, but you can't take it, not the little pieces that like the graphics, the images I'm, are burned in. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Oh, all right. All right, Cassie, yeah. before we wrap up, what questions I might have? A, I'm sure you've got a million and that you're probably not even thinking about yet, but what, what questions are any burning before we, we go? No, actually it's good. I'm just like, okay, I got a, a ton to learn on where to click uh, and, and play. It seems like a lot, but it's also a lot less confusing than it was an hour and eight minutes ago. <laughs> Thanks to you. So thank good. you, man. Good. Uh, so Cassie, a couple pieces of advice I'd give you, because first of all, and, and I, I, we've talked about this, but I'll say it again for everybody that's listening. First videos are always tough. We're never happy with them. We're going to look, you're going to look back, even if you feel good about it, you're going to look back at it at some point and say, that was not a good video. Um, I think you've, you've done a, lo a lot here that is really, really good for a first time video creation, right? You left good gaps. Um, you know, you, you've thought through your video, what it should look like, what it, it needs to be. And I think that's, that's all awesome and really important stuff that you've done. Uh, you know, where I think if I can be bold to give you a little bit of feedback, um, you know, I know you, Cassie, you have good energy. You, you are good on, in, in camera. And I, I'd say lean into what you're good at. And, and if the camera is freaking you out, the script's freaking you out see what you can get away with not being scripted. You know, can you, once you get lined up and you know where your kind of position is, can you turn off, like hide the camera view? So you don't need to look at your, yeah. all my, I'm looking at my eyebrows right now going blah, 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 crazy, right? <laughs> exactly. I need that off right away. Right. So like, think about how, what are those things you can eliminate so you can focus on giving a really good performance? Cause I know you're capable of it and this isn't bad by, by no means it's bad, but I know, having talked to you and I know your energy, like it, it, it feels a little lacking, but yeah. here's, here's the other thing about video. Even if you were giving a really good performance and you felt pretty good about it, the camera seems to take away from that a little bit, right? Like it doesn't translate through a hundred, hundred percent. And so the thing that you think like, Oh, I need to have a little bit more energy, maybe do even more. So it comes through. Like I, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty spastic. My, my brothers called me a spaz when I was a kid. I think they still might, but like big, bigger, right? Think bigger, more energy. And if you're doing multiple, if you're going to do multiple takes, you know, do your, your, your kind of normal one, but whatever you do last, I, and I love this doing this is do one. That's going to be my, my over the top. I'm just going to go big. And it's, yeah. it's, it's funny how often I end up using those because it was just such good energy. It felt good. No, there's, there is a limit. There's too much like I'm screaming at the camera, you know? Um, <laughs> but I think, cause you, I think you've got all the right pieces of having a really great video. And then for some of those assets, you know, like, you know, just really think through like, okay, how do I, what do I show here? Uh, particularly from a screen screen video standpoint, I think as you're giving your tips, cause they tend to involve things that are, cause it's virtual. Um, yeah. can you involve that? So people get the sense of that's not only because they, you want them to see it, but that's the sense of the world that you, you live and breathe in is these, yeah. these tools. And, um, so yeah, that and your camera, right? Uh, well, yeah, you, your camera's course. great. Cause I'm looking at it right now. It looks really good. It just zoom mm -hmm. makes cameras look bad. I took it away. Yeah. So I'm interested to record in Camtasia and see what that looks like. And it's funny. The um, I I think that the 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 whole video is way low energy. I'm nothing like that. So it's so interesting that that happened, um, and it's the same advice I give people when presenting live. But I think you and I talked about this a long time ago. Like for me, I can course correct when I'm live, and I can realize, oh shoot, I sound sleepy. Let me fix that and go. But on video, I'm like, oh dang, it got recorded like that. <laughs> you know? and I'm like, delete, do it again, and then I'm angry that I have to delete and do it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is, that is, that's a challenge, you know, and I think it's, it's, I, I have certain 
I'll call them rituals at this point, particularly, and I'm sure you do too when you're going live, like you're going into a production or a training session. Um, yeah. And I and I try to I try to bring those to, to to kind of level set when I'm going into a recording, because I want to be able to be on my best, and I and hopefully those things become automatic. So I'm like, okay, I'm having a maybe I'm having a kind of low energy day, and I know I need to get behind the camera. What can I, what are the things that do to make, like, I know, like at the beginning of the show, I hear that music that's right beforehand. I sit up straight, I straighten my, and I'm like leaning in and I'm like, okay. And I know the opening phrase to this show is probably everybody else that's listened to more than three of them. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Like, and I just know it. And it's like, okay, that's, that's the level set for me to be live. And so I think as you start to work on recording yourself on camera, because it is different than being live. Think about what, what, what's routine to help you remember high energy, you know, focus, don't, don't worry about what my eyebrows are doing. <laughs> worry about this or, you know, and don't forget breathing room. And I, I know we, we talked about this off air too, is like, I said my line, keep looking at the camera. Don't immediately look away. And I, I still make that mistake all the yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. I see Great. Jane David said that, that blue about the bloopers. I, I will say there was one point and I was going through the video you had this look you were so disgusted you're like just I hate everything yeah it would be <laughs> and I, I never go like I never go low on anything I'm feeling I'm either I hate everything and the world is awful or I'm totally in love with everything so <laughs> it's like and you wouldn't even know that from that recording that I'm like that because I'm like hello everybody <laughs> let me just get this recording done <laughs> you know yeah yeah. Well, Cassie, this is uh, this has been super fun. I hope I hope uh, first and foremost you've taken away some thoughts, and uh, I hope you don't give up, and we can you know make some continue to make some tweaks. I will send you everything that I worked on, so you can choose to throw it away and curse my name in effigy and and all that good stuff, or choose to build off of it. Uh, but I appreciate you being here with us today and, and being a guinea pig. Uh, I, I found this to be super fun. Uh, I hope you did. I hope you got good stuff out of it. I hope our audience, I hope you all found value in it too. So, well, thank you, Cassie. Appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much for guiding me and all your advice and uh, continued uh, not only friendship, but mentorship in this case. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you. So Cassie, let's give you one more last sh shout out because I, you know, despite what maybe they've seen on your video, which I think they should be all be super impressed. You're amazing at facilitating training, teaching people how to facilitate trainings, virtual trainings. Where can they find you? You can find me at CassieConsulting.com. And what I do is I work with uh, training teams around the globe helping you figure out how to do live virtual training, <laughs> like how to engage people, how to course correct in the moment, how to get people to be actually learning rather than sitting there and being bored and having no questions. But Cassie Consulting and also uh, all over LinkedIn as well. Yeah. So uh, I am just, I, I have been so engrossed in Camtasia, I didn't even look at questions that came in. So thank you, Sane, for some, there was one question, when is it better to separate audio from the video? Uh, when it doesn't matter that the video can get separated like there's not a good answer to that like so we could have separated your voice from your picture the risk is that then your mouth gets you get the out of sync thing where it's not focused so i would say whenever it doesn't matter if it's i try to keep it together if you're on if it's someone on camera otherwise it doesn't matter too much or if you're going to change the audio for some reason which would be weird but all right. Well, Cassie, thank you so much. I hope everyone goes checks out your stuff. Cassie Labori, everyone. And with that said, that wraps up. I don't know. Is this season one? Is two years season one of the, the Visual Lounge? I don't know. We're going to be on hiatus for the next six weeks as a reminder. But first of all, before we do that, I know you probably stopped watching already, but if not, I want to thank a few people because it's been a long and winding road to get to this point and we're excited about what's ahead of us for the future. But I must thank, first of all, Jesse O'Donnell, who regularly does our uh, social media monitoring. Uh, Autumn, our intern, 
who also does social media monitoring. She does the posts on social media. So grateful she's actually here today as Jesse's wrangling kids around today, which we're grateful that she has the opportunity to do that. So Autumn, thank you. I want to thank Andy Owen, who's been a, a great supporter of the show. Ryan Knott, who's helped with our blog content, making sure that was all tip top shape and uh, Content 10X, the team over on, on that side who uh, has actually created a lot of, of our repurposed content, helped edit the show, she puts in the chapter notes and all that great stuff. We love working with them. We're grateful for them. And then just TechSmith in general for allowing us to be able to move ahead. And last but not least, I want to thank all of you who have ever taken a moment to listen to the show, to download, to comment, to ask questions, and to do all that for our regulars who are here almost every week. We're grateful for that that support. We can't thank you enough. We're I am so excited about some of the ideas that are starting to pop up about where we're going to take the show. We're just Gonna, gonna really rethink about how we can make this even better of an experience and uh, hope if you've got ideas, let us know. You can always email us at the visual lounge, visual, the visual lounge at techsmith.com. Don't forget to download, like, and subscribe. We always appreciate it. And with that said, whatever you're doing, wherever you are, we hope you take a few minutes to level up each and every day. Thanks everybody. <laughs>